Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to the Tristcast. I am your host, Tristan Dario, and I invite you to sit back, relax, catch a vibe, and enjoy the show. Hey, y'all, take a moment before you get settled. Follow the Tristcast and leave a rating. All right, I'll see you in today's episode. Peace. Hello! How's everybody doing? Dude. Mm. If you are not watching the show right now, um, just cracked open a nice Celsius. Mm. And we're listening to Tyler. I just said the lyrics wrong, but hey. And can you make it last forever? How's everybody doing? Welcome back to the Tris Cast. I hope you're having a wonderful start to your day. I hope you're having a wonderful point wherever you are, whenever you're listening to this. Um, my glasses are actually really smudged right now, so give me a moment real quick on that. Got to be able to see. I can definitely tell the difference of rapping in this era of Tyler. I don't want to go both ways and you cross my mind. I'm sick of, sick of, sick of, sick of city song. Living on the run, gotta get my grades wrong. I don't want to see both ways and you cross my eyes. Dude, lyrics. And can you make it last forever? Got to give a whoa, and then I really wanna do you again. To get a kiss, and can you make it last forever? I'm about to go to war, and I wanna do you again. All right, dude. I think I'm ready now that my glasses are done. <laughs> um, Celsius, tropical vibe. Bro, if you guys are not on Celsius, I'm like, if you're not on Celsius yet, you need to get on it. Ooh. Loud knocking. Good weed knocking at your door. Mmm. We got the jams going on today. Sorry, I'm getting caught up by the music. My ADHD said, ha ha, let's dance. <laughs> um, how's everybody doing? I, uh, I, um, I, uh, lately, man, 
living the dream, making my dreams turn into my reality, achieving goals. Dude, feels good. We've came a long way. I have definitely came a long way myself. Dude, not paying attention to the things that, like, what I mean by that. Okay. I came a long way from things that I used to never pay attention to. And now that I'm paying attention to certain things, maybe it's just where I'm at now in my life. Or maybe it's my age. Maybe I'm thinking more about or reflecting more on my life and things and how to grow and stuff. But, you know, I also am in a place in my life where I take a lot of things as signs and synchronicities are constantly happening in my life, which I'm very grateful for, very grateful for. When when I started recognizing, like, everything that's actually happening in my favor and how much it's happening in my favor, like, I, it's like the saying that I used to see when I was, like, coming up to this place in my life, you know, Instead of instead of that whole, what if it doesn't work out? What if it did work out? What if it works out better than you've ever expected? You know, that's like a constant in my mind nowadays because instead of seeing how things can negatively impact me, the only thing is I'm, I'm coming to places where I have to answer to that fear, like opening up to new people and letting things be known that I like certain people or I, you know, just putting myself out there. And having to break past that fear, you know, of someone seeing me for, you know, not just what some people may see, you know, people are seeing whole me and like, that can be scary sometimes. It can be really scary sometimes. And yes, I am hugging the pillow because this is, this is a comfort thing for me. I really, you you ever just, you ever just really wish you had just a human body there you know somebody that just understood you and then like you're just like god i just want to snuggle with you you know it's comforting if you're a fan of born electric loves coming on and this is your time to listen to it because clearly a lot of us right now are meeting incredible people that are really showing us how good it feels to open up and you know, like I'm, I've been, I have a lot of friends who are meeting new people who are like, dude, it's getting serious. I'm enjoying this. And I'm like, bro, I'm so happy for you. It's incredible. Everybody is getting out there. People are putting themselves out there. People are like living, dude. People are living and my friends are living their life and they're having a great time. And I'm so happy for them. They're not letting life get them down. They're pushing for it. Like they're chasing their goals. And it's just, it's exciting and I and I clap for them and I'm so excited for them and I'm happy for them. I'm quite literally jumping for joy internally right now. Need is to be struck by your electric. I'm not going to do that right now. But there's a subject that I really want to talk about right now. And that is, I I was making a YouTube video yesterday, which is something new for me. I've never done that before, besides like the podcast and posting on YouTube. So, I have another uplifting type of video coming out, and it's going to be on the YouTube channel, Simply Tris Soon. And this is just another step in the direction of what I've been wanting, like something that I've wanted to do. And like, I've been getting a lot of inspiration. Praise God. There's a lot of inspiration that's talking to me and saying, dude, you have what it takes to do this. You can do this. Just do it. Who cares if it's bad? Make art even if it's bad. And, you know, like, I love that. I love that. I follow this person on Instagram. That's another topic, but their name is Ethan Uncurated. A lot of people probably know this person. He makes he makes a lot of really good, inspiring content on Instagram and TikTok about just making stuff, even if it's not exactly what you think it's supposed to be. And, you know, that's very inspiring and it's very motivating. And, you know, to get that perception from a different person living this life, making their own art, you know, it's it's really it's really needed and and it's appreciated. But that's a topic 
that I haven't really been open about to a, a lot of people right now. And that is... I have officially taken a complete and more than likely permanent break from social media, which has taken a long time for me. It got to the point where I was just like, I'm spending too much time on Instagram and Twitter. And I made the decision maybe a week or two ago to just, del- I made the decision a while ago to delete Twitter because Twitter has been a fucking mess since Elon took it. So I'm not a huge fan of Twitter. And I'm also just not a huge fan of Corpse. It's just how it is. Um I'm I'm more of a fan of small businesses and to be around other people who create small businesses. I love that. That is something I love. Corporates or corpse, corporate world, not my not my cup of tea. Um but no, I delete, I deleted, I deleted t- Twitter and I deleted Instagram, just off my phone, for the time being. Uh, like I said, it uh, it's more than likely a permanent, uh, a permanent thing. Depending on how my life changes in the near future, you know, if there's something, if there's something that pulls me back in, I'm sure I'll, I'll follow through with it. But right now, it feels very freeing. Right now, it feels great getting off the net (laughs) it's fucking weird i said it like that but i got off the internet bro i play my video games still which i'm happy about spider-man 2 comes out soon i've been fucking excited for that i've been having dreams of being spider-man that's how fucking excited i am for it um i've been watching a lot of movies and new tv shows top boy and Top Boy, I just started that. I Cody Ko and Noel Miller were just talking about that on their podcast when I was watching it. And Top Boy is one of those gritty crime like UK shows that I'm that I'm trying to get into. Um, and I've been binging the morning show on Apple TV again. And damn, bro, I'm gonna turn this up a little bit more. Yeah, but I've been watching that. And the morning show has been incredible because that's just enlightening me how much, like, especially season one, in season two, seeing how people just, oof. But the real topic, the real thing I really want to talk about because I got sidetracked there. Um, I love how I clean my glasses at the beginning of this just to take them off. I've been getting used to wearing my contacts. Getting sidetracked again. The topic is to keep going. And not only just keep going, but... Embodying... Keep going. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna sidetrack even further on that. Keep going. If you're in a place in your life where you are at a place of uncertainty and you have no idea what the fuck you're doing or who you are or what you're supposed to be doing or if that person you're meeting is the right person or if you're, you know, this or that, whatever the fuck it is, dude, keep going. Because whatever's telling you to stop or whatever's telling you to be scared or however you're tapping into this and you're trying to fucking maneuver through it, you just got to keep going. Like, actually, keep going. And, you know, you don't have to keep doing, you know, you don't have to, like, fucking take that so deeply either. Like, what I mean by that is whatever's happening, take one step and just one step after another. You can't really force anything, and you can't really take yourself into the future. We don't really have time machines yet or the ability to go back in time or go into the future at all. So, like... You really, you really just have to have faith. And you can't, dude, we cannot be so afraid of what's happening that we just continue to lose ourselves. Uncertainty can really show us our true power, especially when we release control. Like if you just release it and you just keep going and you're just like, hi, how's it going? I'm here and I'm I'm going, I'm going, I'm here. 
you know, a lot of people always tell me, Tristan, keep going, keep going, keep going. And keep going is like the number one fucking phrase that is always going on in my fucking brain all the time, which I'm very grateful for. I love that. That's like the biggest motivator I've ever had. Quite literally. Cup another bag of smoke today. Jake holds on. This shit's about to go off. But no, I'm very grateful because when I, like, the phrase keep going, you have no idea where you're going to be in five years. So if you just release control of where you're going to be in five years, you're just like, fuck, I get to enjoy this however way it goes. It's like, you know, we are taught to believe that we have to be somewhere specific by a certain age and we have to do all this and do all that by a certain point in our lives. But we all have our own compass and like we're all figuring it out and like it's important to have goals. It's important to have like goals and have a vision of what you want for your life, which is very important. It's very important. But you have your vision. Now that you have your vision, you just got to take your walk. And because you have that vision of where you're going to be, you just keep walking and you just let Life do its thing instead of having to have your hands on every fucking angle of life. You just be like, fuck it. You know, you guys remember the song, Jesus, take the wheel. You know that shit. Come on, man. Like, it doesn't have to be Jesus specifically, bro, but it can be like, source, take the wheel of this and help me to release control of it. A lot of us want to be in control very often, you know? Like, a lot of us just want to be like, oh, shit, I can't take this, so let me put my hands on the steering wheel. Especially when you have no idea what the fuck's going on. Like, you're so scared. You're like, I got to have some sort of grip on this. What you have to have a grip on is, you know, your abilities. You have to keep a grip on your mental state. You have to be able to have a grip on how you are taking care of yourself, your self-care routine. You got to be able to keep a grip on that and just focus internally on what it is that you really want. I, I feel like this is common for a lot of us to talk about, you know, like, what is it we want? Who am I? If you don't know who you are yet, you know, Loving kindness is a great place to start. And, you know, like, that may not make sense, but, like, going within and touching base with who you are within yourself helps you find yourself. Like, a lot of the answers you are seeking to the questions you have can literally be found within yourself if you can take the time out to be patient and listen and no, you're not going to get it on the first try, but like it takes a consistent, a, it takes consistency and it takes you trying to continue to listen and like strengthen your connection to your intuition. Like that's the, that's one of the number one things I pray to God about. And like, I'm so thankful to God about because we have the ability to strengthen our intuition but if we're too impatient to put time into it, we'll, we won't actually get there and we'll wonder why everybody is passing by us and it'll feel like everybody's passing by us. But I'm also a believer that everything happens exactly when it's supposed to and everything is happening exactly the way it is supposed to. So when you can instill that belief in your in, – in, when we can instill that belief in our minds that, you know, we if we are – good people, or at least we're striving to be as good as possible, being compassionate, being loving, being supportive, understanding, you know, seeking to understand and to learn and not act like we fucking know everything. You know, you have your truth. So connect with your truth. What is your truth? What is your unique truth? How do you connect within yourself? What do you have to do to connect within yourself? Some people, a lot of people go to meditation. A lot of people go to breathing techniques. A lot, like, there's several different ways to get in touch with yourself. So you have to be willing to do that work. And if you're not willing to do that work, 
like there was like I was just talking about this last night. You know, there's there was such a long time where I didn't want to answer things inside me. There was things I didn't want to fucking even acknowledge because I was so afraid of what other people were going to think. or I was so afraid what society was going to assume about me. So I was like, or like other traumas and other shit that was stopping me from being open with myself. Because I have to be open with myself. You know, I can't really be open unless I know who I am. And I can't be open unless I'm willing to go that deep within myself. We can always go and try to be fucking superficial and cliche around everybody. But that's exhausting pretending that you're a specific person just to make it with other people. Like, at that point, those people don't even fucking matter. Like, you're really just abandoning yourself over and over and over and over. And, like, I couldn't, I I stopped, I could not abandon myself any longer because not only did I feel abandoned by people around me, but it hit even harder when I started recognizing how I was abandoning myself. How I was allowing people to disrespect me. How I was allowing people to not take me seriously or allowing people to take me for granted. You know, I couldn't keep doing that. I was leading myself cycle after cycle after cycle after cycle. And like, dude, it's fucking exhausting. So like, I don't really have anything to prove to anybody anymore. I'm just like, fucking, I'm me, bro. So like, take what you, take, take me as I am. If you really give a fuck, take me as I am and I'll take you as you are and we will grow together. You know, that's, we are meant to be very unique in our own individuality, but to be able to come together with our own individuality and come together to be different pieces in each other's lives. And, you know, sometimes it takes us going into deep solitude finding ourselves and having to be alone and realize how important it is to reach out to our friends and how important it is to not let go of what's important to us. Also, I donated to the Human Rights, um, I be- it's HRC, Human Rights, um, fuck. It's not... Oh my god, that was gross. Um, it's the human rights... Um... Anyway, HRC. One of my favorite all-time organizations for equality, for human rights. It's one of my biggest... It is one of the biggest things in my life that I really care about. Donated and they sent me this incredible... Like, I mean, dude... This backpack is so dope, and it has that reflective lettering for equality. Even the symbol, man, I love it so much, dude. It's got this. It's got this pocket where I can put my laptop and shit in, and then it's got other room up here, pockets inside, dude. I fucking love this bag, and not only is like this really cool, being able to be one of the people a part of making the world a safer place not only for me and you know like the people around me but like people who don't have similar privilege people who are in places that really don't consider them real or normal or important as anybody else you know and human rights really matters to me so if i have the ability to donate and give money to a cause that's going to make it easier like they're working on the equality act right now to make it more possible for people of the lgbtq to have equal access to homes jobs and etc that really matters to me i'm making that a point if you haven't found an organization that you really want to do something that will change the world for others HRC is incredible. Also, environmentalism, the Sierra Club, incredible organization to donate money to. They help look after wildlife and they help protect wildlife boundaries and stuff on, you know, land that can't be used by corpse who want to take oil and be fucking rich. 
You know, like, I, I want to be rich, but I want to be able to make so much money that I can give it back and then make it all over again and give it back again. Make some more, give it back again. You know, like, it doesn't have to be take, 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 take. Cool, I'll just take, take, take. You know, like, no, we can't just be so selfish, you know? And, like, that's, we can't be that, we cannot be that selfish. You know, there is a, there is, you know... We are selfish to an extent, but we have the ability to be selfish, selfless people. Be able to put ourselves first, get ourselves to the place we need to be at, to be able to help the people around us. And then when we can give back and we can just do more for the people around us, you know, that's very important to me. I talked about this with um, Yusuf, man. Ah, oh, I miss Yusuf so much. We, we had so many incredible conversations while I was visiting Florida. I was just having a conversation with a very close friend of mine um, yesterday. And they were like, they're like, dude, we'll all have a chance to come back together in Florida. And I said over the phone, I was 100% serious. I was like, bro, Florida is literally, one, is literally the least inhabitable fucking state, really, for a lot of people. And I don't, uh, I have no desire to really go and spend a long period of time there. I'll, I'll visit, obviously, because I got, I, I want to. I want to visit the people that are still living there. But, like, I don't think I will want to live there or spend an extended amount of time there. It's just, in my opinion, not safe. The political climate, you know, the actual climate of the state, you know, it's, I just don't align with it. And, you know, it's very, it, it sucks. Be, not, it doesn't suck, but, you know, it's, oh, my music stopped. I was so excited. Um, Give me a moment. I just want to listen to my music. I literally brought my charger up to do it. Like, I brought my charger up so I, so that I could listen to my music without it fucking dying. And guess what? Still fucking did. But that's my fault. I, 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 I thought 22% was going to last a lot longer, but then I remember my iPad has that keyboard that likes to drain. So, but it should be back up momentarily. Yeah, it's already turning on, but, um, yeah, man, like, HRC, Sierra Club, there's plenty of more organizations out there, um, and, you know, if anyone's interested, I, you know what, I'll put in the bio, because I already have a lot of ways that we can help out others around us, and I leave those in the bios of all the episodes, but, you know, I, HRC and... You know, environmental causes really do matter to me. You know, we have... I was talking about this not too long ago. You know, I come from a very Christian household. And, you know, a lot of my family talk about how we're in the end times right now. Okay? We're in the end times. That's what they say. You know, Jesus is returning soon. And I'm like, you know... Hold on, before I tap into that. And there's a lot of people, you know, in my family that say, you know, we are in control of this world. You know, we got to give it to God and let God handle it. And I'm like, a part of our opportunity to come into this human experience, since we're spiritual beings connected to source already, and they're giving us the opportunity to come here, you know, we are able to just spend it to experience and learn and to travel and see the world for what we want to see, you know? But every single time someone says we're in the end times, I'm like, do you really think that we should just give it up and not do something that could possibly make the world last a little bit longer? Or are we really not supposed to like put our own hands into it you know we have a purpose here like we are given abilities for a reason to do something so yeah we might be in the end times sure jesus might be coming back soon sure 
but we have we are gifted the ability to do the work ourselves as well like we could put po- like instead of giving it up and not taking accountability and not taking responsibility over our fucking home that has 8.1 billion people living on it we have the ability to make it last longer, but there's so many people that are trying to push down that ability because they're more worried about money and evil and, and their own fucking ulterior motives. So, like, instead of seeing it as we can't do anything, so we might as well just let God do it, you know, God gave us the ability to come here and do the work ourselves. Like, we have the, we have the ability in the palms of our hands So why is so many people like, oh, well, the world's a shitty place. Can't wait for Jesus to get here. Why the fuck? Like, yes, Jesus is going to come back or God's going to come back again one way or another. But like, do you really not want to take care of the world? Do you not like you want to be a grandparent and you want to have grandchildren and see your kids, kids grow up and have a home of their own? But we literally live in a time of our life where it's impeding. Like we are possibly putting so much pain into the world that our grandchildren may not even have a fucking home to live on. You know, our grandchildren might have to go to a different planet if they even have the fucking money to do it because we're not taking care of it enough. Like we... It's, people are trying to run away and explore other planets and explore the solar system, but they don't want to put their billions of dollars into making more, you know, reusable energy or putting down new ways that could transform life on how we can make the world last longer. Instead of increasing carbon emissions, lower them and be able to find ways to combat them in a safe and healthy way. These are all possible methods instead of just giving it up and saying, nope, we're just going to wait till God gets here and let the world get destroyed and then life will be over and we all get to go to heaven. That depends on you even believing like that sort of belief. If that's your belief system, if that's what you think is going to happen or that's what you that's your truth of what's going to happen, you know. There's a lot of other people that believe spiritually that they have the chance to come here, learn, experience, do something positive for the world. Then they die and then they get to come right back and do something else in another lifetime. Some I really attach to that. Like that is one of like I truly believe that that is something that I will do when I pass. And it may not be the same lifetime right now it may be somewhere way back in the 1400s or i could be so far into the future that it's like 10,000 10,000 like 102 like it's year 10,102 or some shit like you know like it is we only understand as much as our human brain can understand but once we transcend the human experience We forget what happened here. We forget what happened in our life because we've already had several other lifetimes. This is what I personally believe. So for us to get so engulfed in being, oh my gosh, I don't want to be here. Oh my gosh, I can't do this. Oh, I can only handle what I can. Yeah, we can handle only what we can handle. Not everything is in our control, but we can work together rather than being like, nah, fuck it. Give it to someone else to deal with. It's not my response. That it just releasing our accountability strictly because it is a nuisance to us is so toxic and ignorant that you know I we have the ability to do something right now. We have the ability to recycle more. We have the ability to, you know, it might be fueling other people's pockets, but like we can get these pieces of technology where all of our scraps that we don't eat and is usually wasted, we dump into it and then it turns into soil. Like we could do more things that place those kind of systems in people's homes. So instead of just adding plastic and trash into trash dumps and putting plastics and 
shit into our oceans, we could actually put these trash cans that turn our trash and waste into fucking soil that we just throw out into our yards. Like, we could do that instead. Like, but, you know, this is a collective thing that needs to happen, you know? It's not like me saying this quite literally could inspire somebody to push this, and I pray to God it lands into someone's hands who possibly wants me to come and be a part of it. I would love that. I would love to be a part of something that changes the world. Even if I'm changing the world just by doing this, like this is what I'm happy with. But like, dude, we could just get a job and we could just live and do that job until we die. But that wouldn't do shit for us. That like, in my opinion, that wouldn't do shit for us. Like, experiencing, finding a way to make this world last longer, you know, it's like that conversation when people, you're 25, or, you know, like, you could have a family. Do you not want to have a family? Bro, we live in a time of our life where having a family right now may ultimately not be good for those people. Like, look at the climate we're in right now. Why would, why would a lot of people want to bring children into the world right now? Yes, they just want to have someone to look after, and they want to keep their name going, or they want that legacy going, but, like, Think about where your child might be in their 20s. Like, who do you, like, these two-year-olds and five-year-olds who are growing up right now, how do you think life's going to be for them if we continue down the path we're going down? We need to do more for the world so it impacts people in a better way. Yeah, it might be shitty for us because we've already been here and we already have our own traumas and we already got shit going on in our lives. That's the selfish. That's the toxic. Not thinking about the people who you want to come after you. Oh, I just can't do any of that. Yes, you can. It, especially if you have a platform. If you have a platform and you have that, that like, credibility and you have the ability to build relationships with people who have the ability to make this kind of change, that is, like, I sound like my friend Chloe right now. Like, I, <laughs> but it's true. It's very true, and I remember I remember there were several times I used to look at Chloe while she's having, like, this kind of conversation with me, and I'm just like, I don't know what I can do right now. And she's like, you don't got to do anything right now. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's like a huge circle for me right now. But, like, no. You know, like, this is very important, and we can either keep on acting like we can't do anything about it or we can actually get the fuck up and do something about it. Even if it's something as small, it's just talking about it more. Like talking about HRC or talking about Sierra Club or other organizations that look after our environment and look after other people. Because, you know, there are people out there that don't have the same support as others. There are people out there that don't have the privilege like us. You know, there's a lot of people that can't sit in a fucking house and do a podcast. There's a lot of people who can't leave their day job and be like, I'm going to sit here and have conversations with people and talk about the shit I care about once a week. Like, come on. Come on. When we can really pay attention to how privileged we are, that's when we can start really noticing how we can do different things. And that's what matters. Now, obviously, you know, we're human. Go out and explore. Go out and experience. But don't forget the people around you. Don't forget that this is a huge thing. This came up for me on one of my astrological apps, and it was they impact you and you impact them. Listen to how aware that is. They impact you, you impact them. Like that's, you know, think about that. Think about it. That is a, that is, you know, a little bit magnified for you. But what's going on in my head, where I'm at. So keep going. Keep learning and keep doing your best. You know, none of us are perfect. So if you're struggling with perfectionism and you think that being perfect is the only possible way, you're wrong. Just be you because you being you is more than enough. You are literally enough just as you are. As my friend Sierra would say, being a human, man, you shouldn't have to worry about being worthy for other people. You're already worthy. There's the systematical 
programming that the system places on you into believing that you're not worthy enough already. The second you're born, you are worthy. The second you are born, you are capable. You are you have every bit of power in your hand. Take it and go do something good for the world. Go do something that brings love and peace and compassion into the world. Okay? All right. I think this is a great place. I don't want to keep I I think I think this is the perfect place to put it down for the moment and I um and I love that I got to sit here and say it. I'm really happy. I feel like I did something I had to do right now and you know that felt very good. So with that I would like to say I hope you all have a wonderful morning, a wonderful afternoon, a wonderful evening, and a wonderful night. Peace.